Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. Today doing a what's next on Unieski Gonzalez, the former, um, I'm not sure if he ever fought for a world title back in the day, but he is a top light, light heavyweight contender. Really entertaining fight he had with Gilberto Ramirez. He came up short, lost the 10th round TKO, but man, did he shine in that fight. He really showed a lot of heart, showed at 36 that he's got a lot left in his tank. And for me, given everything going on at 175, I gave him a top 10 spot. I think he's number 10 now at light heavyweight and really can be a threat to anybody. So following the loss for to Gilberto Ramirez, which in some ways you could call a moral victory and something that's going to keep his name in the loop, uh, let's see what's next for Uni es Eski Gonzalez following the loss. You know, because I don't think he's going to take this loss in the ring, he took it hard, very emotional, but passionate kind of emotional. Um, I think this guy will shake this off and get back in the mix. He put his heart on the line in this one, and I, I don't see why he shouldn't just keep his name fresh. At his age especially, throw himself out there and see who's who's willing to fight and take that fight. Any kind of fight, you know. But let's run it through the top ten and see what's possible. Number one, the undefeated unified champion, Arthur Betterbia. I don't think Better Bia would want to fight him after Ramirez stopped him. And I think it's a risky fight for Better Bia, but you know, if Better Bia is really fishing for an opponent, um, you know, in his next fight and he can't get a big one, I wouldn't be completely shocked if they made it, but I, I just don't see it happening. Number two is Dimitri Baval. I think Baval's got just a lot of options that he's gonna possibly take next. Possibly unification with Arthur Better Bia or a showdown with Callum Smith if he doesn't have a mandatory defense against Gilberto Ramirez. So, I really don't see Bival and Unieski Gonzalez being possible. Number three, Joe Smith. He's got his next two fights lined up. Yeah, as long as he wins the first one against Callum Johnson in January, he's got to fight Anthony Yard uh, probably during the summer of next year. And, yeah, that, that just leaves Gonzalez off the table. Number four at light heavyweight is... Um, Maxine Vlasov, the former world title challenger. You know, it's a fight I wouldn't be shocked, but I think Vlasov is in a better position than Unieski Gonzalez. It's a fight he doesn't have to take, but I don't think it's a fight he'd be opposed to if it meant him, you know, locking up a title shot in his next fight. So, you know, following that, I think Vlasov wants to get into that title mix, and if he's got to go through a veteran like uh, Unieski Gonzalez, I think it'd be an entertaining fight. I think he would do it, but I'm going to lean towards the less likely. Number five is Callum Smith. You know, if Smith really wants to test himself at 175, Gonzalez would be a good pony, uh, opponent. You know, Gonzalez showed his heart against um, against uh, Gilberto Ramirez. Maybe Callum Smith, while he's waiting in the wings for a title shot, says, you know what, I want to see if I can do better than Gilberto Ramirez. And Callum Smith's confidence got to be sky high right now following his knockout of Castillo. Uh, second round TKO of Castillo just uh, a few months ago. So I think it's possible, maybe on the less likely of 50%, but I still think uh, Callum Smith might say fuck it and go after him. Number six will be a rematch with Gilberto Ramirez. I'm not seeing that. Number seven is Anthony Yard. Yard's lined up for a title shot in the summer, most likely. I don't see him and uh, Unieski Gonzalez happening. Um, number eight is Elito Alvarez. Not likely that he would take on a guy like Unieski Gonzalez in his next fight. Too dangerous. Alvarez hasn't fought since uh, his his knockout loss to Joe Smith Jr. in August of last year, 2020. So I don't see him returning against a guy as dangerous as Gonzalez. And then number nine is Marcus Brown. He's coming off the loss to Arthur Betterbiev. Um, I don't see him taking a risk on a guy like Unieski Gonzalez. So I don't think it's likely that Unieski Gonzalez gets a top 10 guy in the ring next, but I definitely think he needs to push the needle. He's 36 and he needs to make sure he's staying active, gets back at it, take a, a few months off, maybe come back around May, June, really push for some kind of an eliminator with somebody. Take a risk on an undefeated prospect on the rise. You know, um, Larone Richards from the United Kingdom coming off the win over Congora. You know, guys like that. Um, you know, test yourself out. Joshua Buatzi trying to get in the mix right now. T possibly throw his name in the mix for him. You know, 
I think Gonzalez should say, fuck it, keep training hard and go after it because he really put it all out there and he put his heart on the line against a good solid, against a really good fighter and undefeated Gilberto Ramirez. So that's it. That's a what's next on Unieski Gonzalez following his 10th round TKO loss to undefeated Gilberto Ramirez. I hope you guys enjoyed it. True boxing. You've been hit with the truth.